Design demands a designer, design demands a designer, and design demands a designer. Now, you, you mentioned, uh, let's spend a moment on that uh, battery that you have and explain. Uh, you, you talked to me last night, and I was amazed. You're a fluid dynamicist, of course, and the audience knows that, and, and you're world class, uh, and uh, academics know that. But actually, within the portion of the cochlea, there are various areas uh, with different pressure sensing. Is that correct? And then that's translated through the battery. That's correct. I think uh, back here shows that the, uh, the high uh, frequency waves are interpreted at the beginning of this uh, uh, semicircular or this coil thing here. And the high frequencies, uh, the low frequencies are, are interpreted at the apex. And then in between, uh, we have the lower and the middle frequency range. We take for granted the incredible ability to hear and interpret. But as you've said on this program, it takes a lifetime of building experience to interpret those signals and appreciate those signals. But here the mechanism for the high range hertz and the mechanism for the lower range hertz, that was news to me until last evening. And everything in between. Everything in between. Our personal conversation <laughs> ranges from about uh, 2,000 to 5,000 in that range. And if we get up to these high frequencies and intense sound waves, uh, we would be in trouble if it weren't for something back in the uh, middle ear with those three bones. We can, uh, we could puncture either the eardrum or the uh, oval window, but there are some little muscles uh, attached to those bones Incredible. that restrict them from when the intensity gets too great. Incredible. Professor, how did this just happen? From a, from a rock biodegrading uh, into uh, inorganic chemistry and produce, how did it happen like that? You have to be mad to believe that. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> now, take us back to this transducer and this electrical signal, please. Well, the, uh, the real uh, uh, critical item is this tectonic membrane right here. And you can see the uh, outer hair cells are going up into it. They act as a kind of a <clears throat> preamplifier for the inner uh, hair cells. And so they go into this uh, membrane here, and that's a very difficult. I read last night on the internet, uh, MIT is, is uh, doing some high research on this. They say it's, uh, its whole uh, length could be put into the body, human hair one inch long. It's made of 97% water, and its uh, composition is like a jellyfish. So how would you research something like that? Uh, uh, the uh, brainy people at MIT. And how would you formulate all of that? Uh, how could naturalistic evolution anticipate the needs and the ranges of sound and formulate all of that, nature would have to be God with omniscience for that to occur. And in all of my reading about this on the internet and books and every place, I didn't hear evolution being talked about in this part of the year. Uh, they talk about it over in the middle ear with those bones, and those things, wonderful things happen to get those bones into that position yes. uh, through the evolutionary process. But, but uh, that too is speculation. They, they avoid this complexity. And, and you're, of course, giving credit to the, uh, uh, to the websites and to the research projects and the publications here. Well, this one was particular. Uh, I have the name of that website. I like to give credit to that one. It's called the uh, Promenade Round the Cochlea by Remy Pojo. Uh, www.cochlea.org. You can go and read about it yourself and see what I got out of it. All right. We have just a moment. Let's step to the center. Would you just hold up that battery and that uh, transducer and what we have done in a, in a very crude form accomplishes in a crude form what all of those hertz from 20,000 vibrations per second all the way down to a few hundred vibrations per second are detected and sent out as electrical signals and then to the human brain. Is that correct? That's right. The brain has a history of interpreting those electrical signals, so uh, it hears what I say to you. And you 
I hear what you say to me. Yes. And um, people with a cochlear implant have to relearn all that because their signals, I think, are going through the bony structure. Yes, marvelous. What we have learned is that there was a designer. We know who that designer was. That designer designed the uniqueness of sound and the uniqueness of receptivity, and especially in the human ear. So the information, as Professor Clark has stated to us again and again in this program, is transferred to the brain and interpreted. Now there's a message he wants you to hear. And the message is that he has demonstrated himself throughout nature. Nature is not God, but nature is a reflectivity pointing back to God. And in that nature, we can see with this incredibly intricate, marvelously designed mechanism called the amazing human ear that God wants us to hear and understand. And the ultimate message is that God loves us. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So God sent his Son to die for us. He shed his blood. He was buried. He rose again. And at this moment, in a full universal dimension, he is knocking at your heart's door. Would you pray this simple prayer with me? Just pray this simple prayer. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I know it, and you know it. Thank you for sending Jesus. Lord Jesus, right now, I open my heart to you right now. Step into my heart and live. Save me from my sin, and I will serve you with all my heart. If you prayed that simple prayer, you heard the message of God, you're a member of his family, welcome home. Creation in the 21st century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.